Hi, I'm Lamore Schaffman here with RCR Wireless and the UTU Connect show. With me today are Norman Freckrat from Lemco. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. And also Fran O'Brien from Alcatel Lucent. Fran, thank you. Thank you very much. So what we're here talking about is there is a TIA session that's taking place today talking about 5G networks. And it's the introduction to me about 5G, so I wanted to hear a little bit more, and I think our listeners, particularly because UDU Connect is a channel that's focused on um, Internet of Things, m to m clearly 5G is going to have implications on that. So we wanted to get a sense of what is it all about and what's happening and where are we and things like that. So. Fran, why don't you just kick us off and tell us a little bit, what does 5G really mean and what are we seeing out there? Uh, sure, it's it really in the early phases right now. Uh, it's mainly a research program uh, and um, it's, we're still defining what 5G is in, in the research and we don't actually call it 5G. Uh, that's something that marketing folks will put a spin on later. But certainly it's the next uh, generation technology that we'll see going beyond 4G. And it is typical that we have these changes in technology approximately every 10 years. And uh, while we don't have a set of requirements yet, we're looking at various drivers. And some of these drivers are very high data rate applications, uh, like high definition video, uh, augmented reality, and gaming. Uh, but probably more important are some new requirements to do machine to machine. And while we're doing that today with 3G and 4G technologies, we're looking to optimize it and have a system that can really scale to handle 50 billion devices as, as we go forward. And so part of it is the research now that's taking place, and there's research in new waveforms, there's research on uh, software-defined networks, network function uh, virtualization, things that are actually occurring now, and even some of the 4G technologies will be incorporated as a native type feature in 5G. So let me ask you this, in, in anticipation, 4G, by the time it was implemented, it's almost like when we build a regular highway. By the time the highway is built, it's already over capacity in terms of the number of cars that are going down it. The same is happening with our networks. So is 5G and the way it's being conceived of, is that going to be even sufficient, do you think, by the time it gets developed? Um, we always start out with that objective, right? We don't uh, start out hoping that we're going to build something that meets the needs of today. We're trying to meet the needs for tomorrow. But, you know, there are things you can't predict. And I think the thing many of us miss perhaps on the 3G, uh, 4G was the smartphone, right? I mean, huge amounts of data. I think everyone was thinking email, web browsing, and all of a sudden there were these apps. All right, and so you know, sometimes you miss what's really driving the need for the new technology. Uh, so that's what we're working on now. We're studying use cases, how will these technologies be used, so we do have the right technology you know, 10 years from now when we're ready for 5G. And one further question, Alcatel Lucent, what is the role that it's playing and what is it doing right now? Um, certainly Alcatel Lucent is looking at this as a research uh, activity right now. So Bell Labs is fully engaged in many of the technologies that we see as potentials uh, for 5G. So we're looking at um, anything that will help us get to 5G. What we're really looking to do is provide you know, an optimized uh, cloud service experience for every user and, and machine device. And so we want you know, ubiquitous service we want high quality service, and we want to be able to support various data rates. So we're looking at all the technologies that could get us there, and some parts we already have products for that we're starting to roll out into 4G, and then there'll be new products uh, you know, as we really get to 5G. Thank you. Norman, so your company, Lemco, it's already very innovative, as is Bell Labs continuously. Um, but it's very innovative. It's already thinking differently about current networks. Um, what is, how do you defining 5G? How is your company envisioning 5G, and what's the role that you anticipate playing? Yeah, so uh, at Lemco, um, our underlying fundamental principle is that we want to kind of change the economics associated with mobile broadband. and. Uh, to, per, to Fran's point, you know, with um, mobile video and things like Snapchat, you know, and all these things that are out there that are driving just more and more video and gigabits to the mobile network, the challenge is that the way that the networks have been architected to date, 2G, 3G, and 4G, unfortunately 4G is a centralized kind of hub and spoke architecture, right, and uh, requires a lot of backhaul, you know, to get to a centralized core to then get to the internet, and fundamentally, you know, we want to change that um, architecture from a hub and spoke architecture to a completely flat distributed wireless network. And um, kind of like the internet, right? Um, and the internet works pretty well. It's got good economics and um, it, it handles video very well. Um, people seem to like it. And what we're trying to do is to really 
you know, the way we define 5G is completely, you know, networks, functions, virtualized, um, software-defined networking, but also self-organizing networks kind of combined together. But instead of a centralized solution, we've pushed it and distributed it all the way out to the edge. And when you do that, you're basically collapsing all of that mobile packet core stuff, you know, and running it at the E node B. And we form a distributed network that then just connects over any IP network, whether that's, you know, a cloud, private cloud, public cloud, or the internet, or any IP, you know, connection. We are moving the centralized model to a completely distributed, flat, wireless IP infrastructure. And we believe that's the definition of where 5G should go. Okay, great, thank you. So what is actually necessary to make that happen? Because the, everything is hub and spoke at the moment. So is it enough to insert software into the networks as they exist in order to transform them? Or are we talking about like ripping things out and putting new things in? What are we talking about? Yeah, I think um, you know everything comes down to economics, right? At the end of the day, and technology is great, but if it doesn't have an economic benefit, you know, no one's going to really look at it. So, um, you know, I wouldn't probably propose, uh, you know, replacing 2G, 3G, and 4G network infrastructures and capex investments. The networks work very well, and you know, we're not saying they're they don't work. Obviously, they're working. We think there's innovation that needs to come to the the mobile networks to drive the cost per gigabit down and um, as mobile traffic increases. So what we would look at is a, a 5G kind of technology. What we hope is that 5G is not put on top of 4G and on top of 3G in the same hub and spoke architecture. So when do you do it, right? And that's the question. So when maybe the network is expanding, um, uh, maybe when the, um, there's dead zones or drop zones where you just want to you know, plug in a new technology that can fill that dead zone in the network. Uh, maybe it's um, you know M to M traffic that needs to be supported in a much lower cost perspective, and um, you know when 5G comes out, right? It, you know I would hope and Lemco would hope that it would be in a distributed architecture and we're not putting it on top of it. And what's kind of driving that is the economics. So we need to take the economics of um, wireless today, which is pretty expensive, right? Because all of our phone bills keep going up and up and up on the mobile side. Yes, they do. And uh, you know we need to make it more like wireline economics, right? So we want to take a cost per gigabit from the wireless side and really get it as close to wireline as possible, and then it, then I think the whole ecosystem will work, right? The mobile network operators will be growing profits on mobile data versus today. Um, I think the cost structures are so high for them on a per gigabit basis that there's margin erosion in the industry. And is that one of the reasons they're not pushing the network development into the new future because they still are making their back their investments from the past? Is that what's happening? Oh, it's a little bit of that, but it's so costly. Like small cells, well, let's think about rural areas today, right? So LT doesn't exist in rural areas because it's so costly to roll it out there and people can't afford it. Um, and then you have, um, you know, salute, like small cell, right? Small cells to go everywhere require backhaul, and that's very costly too. And so everyone wants the coverage capacity and the benefits of wireless, but at what cost point, mm. right? So at some point that's going to break. So I would hope that when 5G comes out, it com the architecture supports the economics that are needed to get it closer to a wireline kind of t um, cost structure. Just add to, I think one of the things, um, this has not happened in a vacuum. I mean, even if you look at 2, 3, 3G, 4G, the network has become flatter. Uh, it's, it's not quite what it was. And that was always the goal, was to make the network less complex, reduce the latency, because as you know, as you add in all these boxes, in a sense, as you described earlier today, you add latency. And we've got some um, applications that are latency tolerant and others that aren't. So I, I think the industry recognizes that. I mean, you're pointing out people have invested a lot in these technologies they need to pay it off before they move to the next one but you see a rapid adoption of LTE I live in a town of 3,000 people up in really rural New Jersey we have LTE so it, it, it's there I think it's it's not quite as bad as you're making it out to be in that you know some operators are really aggressively uh, rolling it out so well let me ask you for the question so Alcatel is an, is an infrastructure company you're an OEM um, what do you see is necessary in order to deploy something like a 5G as it's currently envisioned? Because a lot of there are going to be a lot of changes. Well, I, I think we agree um, from the perspective of the cost is the key. And we were comparing some numbers today. We've been saying we want to reduce the cost by a factor of 100 compared to what we have today to the end user. So in other words, if they're paying $30 today for uh, 2 gigabits, for that same $30, they should be able to
able to get 200 gigabits. And so the idea is to really uh, improve the uh, capacity of the system. So I think we certainly agree there. And we, we have products today that uh, support network function virtualization, uh, software-defined networks. So you know we recognize part of the ways of getting the cost down is to put some of this on general processing uh, computing and not necessarily specific boxes that everyone has to build. And not only does this help in cost, but it helps operators roll out features more quickly, provides more flexibility. And so I think you know we see very similar things in the network because 5G has to be more than just about speed again. We just can't say, oh, we're going to give you you know, twice as fast, ten times as fast. You know, we really need to do some work in the network. We need to improve capacity. And what we're really trying to do is optimize service to the customer in the end. So now, how are the customers going to be using this? What is 5G going to do? I mean, we can envision some cool features, but I'm sure you guys have been thinking about it. So what do you see happening? There are some scenarios that we'd be able to make use of this. Whoever wants to speak first. I, 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 I mean, it's, it's a futuristic <laughs> uh, question, so that's kind of a tough one for us. But, um, you know, I think the biggest thing to date has been mobile video, right? And, you know, when you look at the, um, like, text messaging, right, is the most profitable data service that a carrier has. To this day, how long has text message been around? For years. <laughs> right? And the reason why is because, you know, the, the carriers charge for it, and it's value to the subscriber, to the customer, and it requires very little network capacity. It's just a little short message, right? Um, and then you have video, right, which is growing, and actually the SMS, you know, is eroding, right, because a lot of these apps you know, over the top are, you know, taking some of that messaging revenue away. But on the video side, it seems like, you know, everyone wants to just give that cost to the carrier, mm -hmm. right? So that's been causing a lot of the problems. And is when you go into 5G, it's got to answer the video question because that's not going away. I think it's going to continue to grow. And I can't right now think of a more um, abusive, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> you know, application than streaming video all the time. You know, Netflix, you know, YouTube, it's more and more and more. This is going to be streamed over the internet and people are going to be able to watching it on their mobile devices. Well, I wonder how much that's going to cost people, right? So I think it's got to answer the, the technology and the economic side for mobile video, period. Yeah, I, 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 you know, people continue to talk video. We've talked video from 3G almost onwards. It's one of those things that does keep coming back. But, you know, you do ask the questions about, well, how much do you need if you're using a small screen uh, type thing? And uh, it, we're looking at other techniques, too, especially in different uh, scenarios. Stadiums, for example. They all may be watching the same thing, right? Everyone's watching the replay of some sporting event that they're they're watching. You don't need dedicated streaming video. There are you know broadcast techniques that one can use, and so you know we're even working those uh, problems in 4G today. But I think uh, you know 5G is um, another technology where we keep saying, well, we'll do better at video, and already we're talking it's high definition, it's 4K, it's augmented reality. Um, but you know, in reality, this is one of those things we need to be a little careful for and not get ahead. And one of the sessions today will be to discuss what are the applications, because you know, no one can afford to build these things and hope they'll come, right? I mean, we, we have to have uh, some idea of what will be, you know, what the requirements are, what the use cases are, and studies are going on now. But you know, it gets down to keeping the cost down, willingness to pay. Okay. So revenue models, do you, have, you guys have any sense of the revenue models that are going to result in this kind of a network going forward? To the <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, you know the, you know, well, where the where is the industry today? So let's talk about that. Unlimited unlimited data has gone away. Um, tiered pricing has you know kind of really irritated everybody. Um, now you're into family plans. You know, it's all shared usage. But at the end of the day, that's a way just to get the consumer to pay more um, for data services. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're seeing today is that the price per usage for mobile data is going up and up and up and up. And at some point that's got to end or, you know, it's going to become cost prohibitive for people and they'll start to look at other innovative technologies. Um, the industry is also now going to content specific rating and policy enforcement. Mm -hmm. And what, the, what does that mean, right? That's a mouthful. What that means is your time on Facebook on your mobile device may be free, but the time you spend on Amazon's not. So they want to get to that granular of a level of rating and balance management for different websites or different apps. So they want to charge you at that granular level. And I think that's just another step forward with charging more mm -hmm. at the end of the day. So, we're, so where does it need to go? That's where we are now. Where it needs to go is it needs to be unlimited at the right economics where people can pay 50 bucks a month like Wireline and get all you, all you can use mm -hmm. through your mobile device. Mm -hmm. And hopefully lower than that. If you look at rural areas, you know, why can't 
mobility, you know, cost five dollars a subscriber per month? Mm-hmm. Why can't it? I mean, we excellent got, question. Got to get it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ask you the questions now. But I mean, why can't it get that way? And I think if we really look at innovative technologies, like you know, we were talking about network function virtualization, software-defined networking, self-organizing networks, but really a distributed architecture. Mm-hmm. You know, we need, we need to like, in order to solve the problem, we need to change the way it's architected. So we want to basically put LTE or 5G on the internet yeah. as an internet app. And at the edge, at your, as you're as saying. A service, mobility is a service. Um, you know, cellular off the shelf. Mm-hmm. Why can't you walk in a Best Buy and go buy LTE or 5G, like Wi-Fi, bring it in anywhere, plug it into any IP network, and it's a fully functioning managed mm-hmm. cell site. That You're, operates and integrates. Right. That's where it needs to go right. in order to get. It needs to be simple. It needs to be an IT solution. It needs to be shrunk down so the costs are taken out so any IT person can deploy and manage and operate a mobile managed spectrum network. So then you're basically asking the networks to completely de- redefine themselves, their identity, and how they manage their businesses, all the way from the core, all the way up. And I don't mean core from a network core. I meant from the their core identity as a business. But but I think the challenge. Still, will be this still has to be a business for the operator, right, and in in the vendor. So I think that's an, an important point that you know we we get these things so low, it's like all of a sudden the industry moves offshore because no one can afford to do it here. So you know there there is a, a balance on what needs to be done. Final question: When is this happening? Um, so good question. Um, everyone seems to be agreeing it's a. Uh, post-2020 time frame. Uh, research is going on now. That time frame is kind of consistent with what the ITU is doing, which works on these uh, advanced technologies and, and helping the world to define them, and kind of historically where we've been as we move from 2G to 3G to 4G and now to 5G. So, and I put my hedge in there because we're always five years late, so I say somewhere between 2020 and 2025. <laughs> and any final words? Um, yeah, when is it available? Um, you know, let me answer it just a little differently. Um, so as a small technology company that's focused on wireless technologies and innovation, we can't wait for the standards to evolve. So we just defined it. So we already defined what we think 5G is, and we have it functioning and working. It may not be what 5G becomes, but, you know, we took a shot at it, and uh, we, we are focused on that technology and, and taking it to market. And as a result of that, hoping that it influences the 5G standards quite a bit. Well, good luck to you both. I'm very excited about watching what's going to happen with 5G. Fran, Norman, thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining. Stay tuned right here on UDU Connect and RCR TV on the YouTube channel.